Good morning, this is Janice Perkins with Capacity, and I'm joined today um, with Brent Kimnitz of Wichita State University. Um, he is the Assistant Athletic Director of Outreach and Staff Development, and I was just making fun of his title because it's 14 words long. Um, that makes him more important. Is that like, are there like, you know, zeros and um, all kinds of accolades associated with every word of your title? <laughs> Well, that title does uh, make me sound like I really have a pretty official, sophisticated role. But uh, I tell everybody, I'm just the happy guy. I'm the promo guy. I'm the positive energy guy. I uh, It fits me perfect because I love getting out in the community and seeing people and meeting people and promoting. So that's what I do. But uh, everybody, it, you know, gives me a hard time and says, hey, dude, you love everybody. Your word means nothing. So anyway, I love it, and I'm having a blast doing it. Well, you also have this amazing expertise that um, if people don't know, your background is baseball, and you were a pitching coach for how many years? Well, I hate to say that because it makes me sound 100 years old, but uh, 38 years. I, you know, when I'd speak publicly I'd, over the years, you know, I'd be here and I'd say, well, I've been here 14 years. I started coaching here when I was five years old. And then all of a sudden you're here 23 years and then 28 years. So my joke forever was, you know, I started here when I was like an infant. But, yeah, no, 38 years, absolutely loved it. I came here right out of college. I went to a small school in Oklahoma, which unfortunately no longer exists. Uh, but it was Phillips University, great baseball school, great education. But I came here at 21 years old to get my master's degree in August of 1978. Gene Stevenson had just started the program the year before. And the big break I got is he he legitimately gave me the pitchers my first year. I was the pitching coach. Wow. That's a big opportunity. Well, I, exactly. And, and you know, you, you're too young and naive to be nervous. You're just excited, and you're thinking, oh, this is great. This is awesome. And, and you don't have a style. I mean, you're 21. You're just out of college. I'm living in the dorm, and I actually had guys on my pitching staff that were older than me. So, uh, fortunately, I would had some great mentors, you know, growing up, American Legion Baseball College, some, some coaches and pitching coaches were outstanding. And, honestly, that was my big break to get me here. Uh, my pitching coach in college was a guy named Bill Brown, and he had a personal relationship with Gene Stevenson. He he was a longtime American Legion coach and coached Gene on some all-star teams, and they had a great relationship. And that was my end to get me here. Uh -huh. uh, but those great mentors that I had really kind of defined who I was going to become. I, I really went with the angle at 21, like, hey, I'm going to pump these guys up. I'm going to figure out what makes each guy work, and then I'm just going to really push their confidence. And who's not going to like a guy that comes in and says, dude, man, you could be really good. So that kind of was my initial style, and I just built on that over the years. You know what? And knowing you, I can see, first of all, you're great, you're great at reading people and responding to the needs that they have conversationally and emotionally. It's just one of the gifts that you've been given and the enthusiasm that you have, um, not just for baseball, but for life and for people. So um, that is exceptional and the reason why you have been so successful. Well, thank you for saying that. It's funny, you know, I have two teenage daughters and my oldest daughter, who is a freshman at TCU, we were going down last weekend to get her stuff. You know, she, it was still in the dorm and we had to go get it at the time when nobody was around. And, you know, you have six hours to Fort Worth and six hours back to talk. And we have a great relationship and we're kicking around, you know, different things. And finally I said, all right, honey. I said, what's my biggest strength? What's my biggest thing that I need to work on? And she said, well, definitely your biggest strength is positive energy. You're optimistic. So I love that. I took that, you know, in a great way. And I try to be that guy. But then she made me laugh. I said, all right, what do I need to work on? And she said, Dad, you're a hoarder. 
you got to get rid of some of this stuff. <laughs> you know I mean, so it's perfect during this stay at home time. I'm finding stuff and I look at it and I go, why in the world do I still have that? Wow. But, but I've always had that struggle of holding on to stuff. It's like, oh, I'm going to need that sometime. So uh, she made me laugh, but she did She did yeah. make me smile when she said positive energy because I definitely want to be that guy. Y you do. And so does that mean, like, are you the guy in the whole neighborhood that has, like, more toilet paper than anyone else? Or are you just, like, a hoarder <laughs> of nostalgic things? No, I got stuck. I got <laughs> caught behind on that one. I, I went to the store three or four times, and I was like, no way there's no toilet paper so i was a little behind on that one but i finally found some so i'm, I'm in good shape but uh yeah it's like okay why does everybody need this toilet paper so no i'm not in on that one well tell me from your unique perspective this is you know for all the things that we've lived through in wisdom and experience this is a new thing to have like this giant pause button on athletics i mean you know, I tell the kids, you know, I, we lived through 9-11 and the 08 crash. So financially, you know, we've seen some of these kind of downturns, but we've never had like all of athletics, life and entertainment put on pause. Yeah. And this, this, this is something like none of us have seen at all. Um, I, I love telling the story. I was on the radio the other day and I, I was telling the story. I said back in February, you know, we're like on a sprint. It's in the middle of basketball. Baseball's getting ready to crank up. Um, I remember there was one stretch where the 89 team, our national championship team, those guys are all in town, and we're going to get introduced at halftime of the Cincinnati game, and then we're all going to head out afterwards. The next day, the Friday, we have ribbon cutting for uh, Phase 5, the X Stadium expansion, and I'm going to be the MC. And then that night's the first pitch banquet. Right. Me and Mike Kennedy are sharing MC duties. Uh, and then we have an auction. We're going to, you know, auction off some items. And then Saturday, the Kansas Baseball Hall of Fame, uh, the 89 team's going in it. And I'm obviously on the 89 team, but also on the board. And then that afternoon, the basketball team, and I'm with them, we fly to Houston and play on Sunday. I remember thinking, okay, this is awesome. I love it. I'm the perfect guy for this. But I need a break. Right. I'm like sprinting uphill. So... Now we're on the flip side. So you look back at that, and like I say, at the, even at the time, I thought, man, I love this. I'm just worn down. So this is the flip side, trying to make the most of it. Right. I can kill a day with the best of them. But, yes, it's going to be really good to get back on track. A lot of fun things coming up. We're all excited. We're good friends with the pro guys, you know, Lou, Jay, that whole group. So I can't wait uh, for that to get up and running. And, and Wichita State stuff, we're going to grind through it, we'll be better, and it's not like we didn't appreciate it, but it's going to be really fun to get back to going to games. No, it really will. I mean, I, I feel that there's going to be this natural celebratory atmosphere everywhere we go, and I was telling a friend the other day, I, I spent a year in London in college, and the weather in London is always kind of drab, and so when it's a really beautiful sunny day, it's like a holiday and the world stops, the picnic benches come out on the sidewalks of all the pubs and nobody's at work because it's a gorgeous day. And, and it was such an interesting atmosphere of celebration over something so simple like a beautiful sunny day. And I always thought that was so interesting and beautiful. And I feel like that's where we're gonna be again. We're gonna be so grateful to be in gatherings and be with people and be at a ball game and, um, that we have a, a more grateful attitude about it, I hope. Yes, and and you make up a great example of London. It was like that in Anchorage. I coached in Anchorage, Alaska, in summer mm -hmm. ball back in the 80s. Same thing, beautiful. Anchorage is absolutely beautiful. But it may be drizzly and 45, or it may be 75 and sunny. So I totally get that analogy. But to get back with your question here or your statement, Yes, when we're back and we're going to movies, not just sports stuff, but when we're going to dinner, you know, meeting people out for a few drinks, going to sporting events, we're, we're going to be more appreciative than ever. Yes. But my, my psychological or my uplifting uh, promoting style is like we've all got to get during this downtime, and we don't know for sure how long it's going to be, mm -hmm. we've got to come out of it better. And yes. we got to kind of look at ourselves.
myself and say, okay, how do I need to grow? Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I give that to my daughters, <laughs> but it's something that, that we need to look at and do ourselves. That's exactly right. And I like how you, you we can tie that back to the, the hoarding analogy um, classification that you got from your daughter um, in that, you know, it's kind of time to clean out our emotional, relational and physical closets, right? Um, we don't know. No question. I mean, go ahead. we just got to look at ourselves, And then once again, you know, I'm giving that my daughters i'm saying okay during this downtime tell me some things that you're going to work on well they're they're online with school so they're staying busy again but we just need to look at ourselves and say okay what are some things i need to do better that's exactly right and and i was talking to um, another friend the other day and it's really assessing reaching out to people that you haven't talked to in a while um just assessing where you are relationally, not just individually. Um, it, it's if we don't take advantage of this wonderful pause button, you know, the commodity of time is something that we take for granted for how much it's worth, and we never have a lot of it extra. You know, like you said, you, you work a rigorous schedule when we're in the hustle. Um, when you describe that that four day weekend, and when you take the hustle out of it, it's like wow, I've been given a great gift. How can I be a good steward of this and not just waste it by binging Tiger King? Although we are watching that. By yeah. The way. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I am not. My daughters are. But uh, yeah, there's, there's, I, honestly, I've got onto more Dateline, Law and Order, more cop shows, more doctor shows. I used to do that growing up, but I'm back on all of that. And like I say, I can kill a day with the best of them. I, I call it my mobile office, but I'll drive somewhere and just kind of sit in some cool part of Wichita, and I'll shoot information to some friends, some alumni, some boosters, mm -hmm. donors, and just kind of check in on them and, and send them some information, trying to keep them in the loop. Uh, so everybody's having to figure out ways to stay busy. And a couple of my good friends have said, okay, if this is a taste of retirement, I don't want any part of it. And I'm like, dude, I'm with you. I get it. Yes. <laughs> I'm all in. You, you can only go, you know, clean your garage out so many times. And, and the, the hoarding thing, you know, I laughed when my daughter said it. But you can only clean up so much. And it's like, all right, I'm not throwing anything else away. So once, right. we, once we get on track here, we just need to figure out, okay, how are we going to come out of this? And I honestly believe that we'll be better than ever. Mm -hmm. it's it's a time of of stress for a lot a time of, of adversity but one of my big deals with my pitchers forever was the only thing i can promise you is you're going to have adversity i guarantee you that how are you going to deal with it it's going to be the key that's right that's right and um it's through that overcoming and i've been talking a lot about hope also it's it's the ability to look forward to a good thing you know, it, it, it's why I'm having these conversations and posting things is let's talk about focusing on what we have versus what we don't have. Let's learn from each other and throw some positive things out in the world and, and ignore the rest of the noise right now because the rest of the noise is, it's a joy killer. So let's not make eye contact with it at all. No, that's that's a good way to put it. I, I sent out a deal on Twitter, Twitter about two or three weeks ago. All my friends give me a hard time though. I got on Twitter because I was the last guy that, that was a social media guy. But I got it in about a year ago, and I'm having fun with it. But the message I put out about three weeks ago, and it's been very popular. It's gotten a lot of likes, a lot of views. But take on a Thanksgiving mindset. Now, what's yes. that mean? Number one, be thankful. Reach out to people. Let them know you appreciate them. Number right. two, Thanksgiving Day. What's, what's Thanksgiving Day like? It's a day where when you drive out on the streets, nobody's there. That's right. Uh, it, it's being with family, being with friends, social distancing, so to speak. So if you drive out on the street, nobody's there at Thanksgiving Day, you don't think anything about it. So just take on that mindset because I think the mind can be so powerful. And right. then the final thing was what follows Thanksgiving? Well, Black Friday. I mean, it's it's like the most energetic. Now, for guys that don't shop like me, it's not necessarily uplifting. But my point was, it's so 
it puts you in the holiday spirit on Black Friday because there's activity, people are out, things are going on. So that's what's going to happen. That's so right. that's what we've got to put our mind on, and that's what we've got to look forward to. No, I love that. I haven't had anyone frame it exactly like that, but um, to think about having um, a season of gratefulness followed by a season of celebration is a fabulous way to look at that. Um, I am furiously right now looking on my phone for a picture. I think the last time I saw, well, I saw you at the first pitch, but we didn't get a picture together that day. Um, and there's a picture of us uh, with our friend Jim at the Weba dinner. So I'm going to put it up on my screen here in a minute so we can prove that you're nice. Right. Yes. Just make sure I look good. You're going to have to trick it up a little bit, but uh, <laughs> no, I remember yourself. getting one when Eric, Wed when Eric Wedge spoke. I think we That's got right. one that night. That's right. That's exactly right. I'm going to pull it up on my email so um, we can prove that we really, that we really know each other and that you exist. Um, <laughs> That's perfect. Just make me look good. Oh, come on. Always. Always, always. So tell me, one of the other things I've been asking, Brent, um, a lot of people is, I love the examples you've been giving about talking to your daughters. Um, give me another example of how you feel about the taking stock for yourself and relationships right now. Give me an example that somebody else could possibly use. You mean as far as things I'm doing or that other people are using from a relationship standpoint? Um, things that you're doing. Well, to me, it's just reaching out to people. I'm, I'm more of a text, uh, now Twitter kind of guy. Right. But I'm actually taking time to call some people and checking in on some people. With the number one being my mother. She knows I hate talking on the phone. Oh. And also my brother. And he also knows I hate talking on the phone. But I'll call my mother once, for sure once, maybe twice a day. She's 88. She loves getting out. She loves see, me, you know, seeing people. And she's stuck at home. So it's been hard for her. So just reaching out to her, which I should do anyway. It shouldn't take something like this to do that. And she doesn't text. Uh, I'm always giving her a hard time. I'm saying, Mom, you need to start texting. And she's like, well, I'm not going to do that. So anyway, just, just reaching out to people you're close to. Absolutely. Okay, I'm pulling, I'm going to pull up um, our picture here while you still talk. Tell me what's your on the bright side or your silver lining that you have found through all of this? Well, I think it's just, uh, I, and I used to, I use this all the time when I was coaching. I think, and, and forget coaching, this is life. It's just, I think solitude is something that everybody needs. Now, maybe not this much, right. but I used to tell pitchers all the time, I'd say, take some time and look at yourself. Right. And a lot of times I'd go recruiting and say, I'm going to look at a kid in Denver. I never flew, like maybe once, maybe twice in all my years. I drive. That's eight, nine hours of driving time where I wouldn't even turn on the radio a lot of times. It, it's, it's like, okay, this is a time to process things in my head, to just kind of reflect on what I need to do. And then another example, and my, my pictures forever would give me a hard time. I'm a big nap guy. and okay. More times than not, I don't really sleep during the nap. It's just a time to just kind of clear your head out, mm -hmm. kind of process what you need to do. So this kind of is more than we probably need because there's a more free time than, than you actually want or need. But it does give you an example of, okay, silent time, solitude, reflection, that's huge and very yes. much needed. That's right. It, it's part of a, a spiritual and soul need that we have that we honestly don't give ourselves often, often enough. And, um, you know, I always tell people, as unfortunate it is sometimes whenever you get sick, sometimes it's the body's way of keeping you in check and, and putting you to the side for a minute out of the hustle. And, and this is like a worldwide, um, I, you know, someone just said it's a proverbial pause button and it's true. And to, even though I agree with you, this is a little 
too much solitude for me. This is over the top. Yes, but, yes, yes. Um, but it's also taking advantage of it um, so that we will have the energy to run hard and fast when we're given a go. So I agree. Yeah, a pause button. Pause button is a good way to put it. And, and I've given that example of me back in February many times mm -hmm. because it was fun. I was seeing people. We were doing cool stuff. I was traveling. But it was like, I just need a break. And this is, this is a great reminder of that. That's true. So I also want to ask you, so I have a picture up on the screen. Um, Brent is, of course, the really tall one in the middle. Uh, you register, what, 6'5", six, 6'? Six? What are you? Uh, I'm 6'3". Okay. Um, everybody seems ginormous to me. Um, we're standing with our friend Jim Dunning, so we'll have to uh, give him a shout out also. Um, but why don't you tell me, because baseball was actually playing for how many weeks before the shutdown? They, they were uh, 13 and 2. Okay. So, fantastic. Like three, four weeks. So, how were they, they, how were were they looking? They were off to a great start. Really good. Like I said, they were 13 and 2. They had, they had worked their way into the national rankings. They were number thir uh, 30 in collegiate baseball. The RPI, we were 16. Okay. Uh, we had swept a really good Louisiana Tech team at home. So a lot of good things are happening with Eric Wedge. He's, he's going to do an amazing job. He, he's got great character, great presence, great leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's family. I mean, he was the catcher on our national championship team. So he's going to get it exciting and already he's made a huge first step. He's really impressed me. You know, I, I just met him the night we had this picture taken. I heard him speak there and then also at first pitch. And, um, you know, the, the way he imbibes leadership that, that into the players and the way he speaks of it is incredibly impressive. And so I, I, that, that record does not surprise me that he's out of the gate like that. And, and I'm sure everyone's excited to get back out there and see them. You know, it was really cold those first few weeks, too. They, they play in the snow a couple times, right? Yeah, yeah they <laughs> did. Unfortunately, um, I, I, I can be inside. Everybody says, well, what about the weather today? I mean, are they going to play? And I said, yeah, they're going to play. And where I'm at, it's 70 degrees with no wind. So I, I'm up in the sky boxes. I'm in the All-American Club. I'm bouncing around. Right. I got the good life going. But, yeah, they grinded through a couple days when it was snowing. And, you know, Wedge is the perfect leader. He, he's like, hey, your mind's powerful. We're not going to acknowledge that. We're just going to go out and do what we can control. And that's, uh, you know, playing, playing all out with passion and big-time confidence. No, we're, I, I'm really excited. I had, I had put a couple of dates on the calendar to try to come out and see them. Um, but with school in session, a lot of times during the week games, we, we couldn't get there. So I'm excited for... Um, getting back at it, hopefully before too long, so I can see the boys play. Um, I want you to address also the, the other news that's come out over the last um, stay-at-home order time period is basketball news. Um, do you want to speak to what's going on with, uh, with Greg Marshall and the team for next year? Give me your, give me your optimistic outlook. Well, we have a great core coming back. I haven't actually physically seen those guys since the season. I was, we, we flew to Fort Worth. We were going to start the tournament. That was on a Wednesday. We were going to start the tournament on a Friday, but we turned around and came back on a Thursday. That's when they canceled the tournament. And mm -hmm. that same day they canceled the NCAA tournament. So that's the last time I've actually seen those guys because shortly after that is when, you know, the city went on shutdown. Uh, but I believe in those guys, I, I led by Greg, I mean, they're relentless. I mean, they're 24 seven. Uh, they work hard, they're great communicators, they're great with donors that go on trips. You know, I know the number of, of transfers was a little high uh, as compared to, you know, what's usually the case. But uh, you look at the core coming back and you look at the people that we have coming in, which is really excited. I can't personally comment because I'm not sure if we have a letter of intent back. But it's going to be good. All you got to do is look at the big picture, the number of NCAA tournaments, the number of consecutive 20-plus win seasons. Um, you know, it was a little hiccup there for a couple weeks. Uh, I, honestly, I just think it was a case they had too many good players at the same position that were 
roughly the same age, and that's tough Dang. to manage. But on the flip side, uh, I, I, I have big time confidence in the whole staff, and I have followed really close, you know, the guys we have coming in, and it looks like a great blend. Got some older guys, uh, a couple new guys. So it's going to stay good. And uh, the basketball atmosphere and the fans at Wichita State are second to none. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Um, it, I have to say, you know, we're a basketball household. So there's definitely the biggest part of our morning period was, you know, not having March Madness. So um, I think we maybe have stopped crying about it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, March was tough for everybody. Right. Now, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I'm a big guy. I'll, I'll reflect back, and I hit on that earlier. But I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, okay, a year ago, we were in New York at NIT. Or two years ago, we were mm -hmm. in San Diego, or whatever the case may be. So March was tough for people. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big look back at games that happened five years ago or 15. I, I can't sit and, and watch them because I know what's going to happen, and that takes away the excitement for me. Right. But uh, March was tough. March is a fun month for a lot of people. But we're on to April, and, and, you know, you just have what you got, and we have a lot of blessings. So you work off that and look to the future and know that things are going to get really good again. That's exactly right. That's a great note. Well, I'll let you just – segue right to the close on that. I'm so happy to have talked to you, Brent, and catch up. Um, thank you for your insight, your optimism. Always a delight to have a conversation with you. Uh, Brent Kimnitz at Wichita State University Athletics uh, with Janice on the Bright Side. Thanks, Brent. My pleasure. I enjoyed it.